3D documentary videos just like this one are going viral. This is the CEO of the parent company of Trader Joe's in Aldi. He has just finished work and is heading home for the day. Parked next to him is a Mercedes 280, the same model his boss is driving. But they take full teams of animators, weeks of rendering, and people pulling all-nighters to get done. But after hours and hours of testing, failing, and searching for a way to make this work, I found a way to recreate that exact style in just a few minutes using one single tool and my keyboard. It all began in a dimly lit room. Four men huddled around a whiteboard, tracing arrows and floor plans, convinced they could pull it off. From the outside, they looked calm but every detail was a step deeper into the point of no return. With the plan set, they slipped into the car, duffel bags on their laps, masks ready, and silence hanging heavy in the air. The city lights blurred past their window. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how you can make fern-style videos yourself without needing a huge team, endless hours spent in 3D tools, and without needing any prior experience at all. The app that finally allowed me to create videos in the same style as Fern is called OpenR, and it's the exact app we'll be using today. If you want to follow along, I've left a link in the description so you can try it out while creating your own video alongside me. When you sign in, you'll land on a homepage that looks just like this. And the first place we're going to head to is the left-hand side where you'll see the image option. Now, the first thing the app will ask for is a prompt. The smartest way I've found to do this is by using ChatGPT. I simply add my documentary idea at the bottom of this structured prompt that you can find right under the open art link. And for me, the idea is a bank robbery. When I run it through ChatGPT, it gives me a five scene plan. In scene one, the characters are going to be planning and organizing the robbery. In scene two, they're driving to the bank. In scene three, the robbery itself takes place. In scene four, they end up being a little too slow and careless and get arrested by the police. And in the final scene, they're sitting in a jail cell after being caught. And that's really all we need to get started building the video. Later, we'll come back to ChatGPT again to generate the voice lines, since those are also going to be fully AI generated. But for now, let's just take the first prompt, copy it, and bring it over into OpenArt to start generating our first image. Now, if you're wondering why we're starting with images when the end goal is to make a video, the reason is that the video generator we'll use later actually needs a high quality starting frame. That way, each scene in the final video looks consistent and keeps the same style all the way through. Inside OpenArt, you'll notice a few settings above the prompt box. The one we care about most is the model. For this project, we're going to use a model called Imagen 3. This one is built by Google. It's designed specifically for creating high quality 3D renders, and it's the best fit for a documentary style project like this. Once you select it, you'll notice that a few other settings disappear because they're not needed with this model, which makes things a lot simpler. From here, all you have to do is paste in your prompt, set the output size to 16 by nine, so it's YouTube friendly, and then increase the number of images generated. I like to do that because it gives me more variety to choose from and makes it easier to find the perfect shot. Once that's set, just click create. Now the AI has generated all of the images and honestly, they came out looking really good. The characters are wearing hoodies. They look like actual robbers and the atmosphere fits the crime documentary style perfectly. The only one I don't like is the second image because it's the most inconsistent from the prompt, but the rest look great. And for me, the third image is the one that works best. Once you've chosen your favorite, just head to the top right corner, click download original and save it. From there, I just go back into ChatGPT, grab the prompt for the second scene and repeat the process to generate the next image. And as you can see, our second prompt came out looking pretty good. Now, of course, in a couple of the images, the characters look a little bit different compared to the first generation, but overall, I think they still match well. Personally, I think image number one came out looking the best, so I'm gonna click download on that one and then head back to ChatGPT to grab my third scene. The third scene is, of course, the actual robbery taking place. So I'll drop that prompt into open art, hit create, and let's see how these images turn out. And honestly, I think this batch came out solid right from the first shot. One quick thing to keep in mind here, since we're getting our prompts from ChatGPT, sometimes it overcomplicates the descriptions with details we don't really need. If you notice that your images aren't coming out the way you want, just skim through the prompt and simplify it. Now for the fourth image batch, everything else checks out except for this one, where some of the cops look like our characters. Also, take note that sometimes the AI will change up the background or shift 
shift the setting too much. And if that happens, you might need to go back into ChatGPT and ask it to be more precise about keeping the location consistent across every scene. But in this case, the final image came out looking perfect, so I'm happy with it. And finally, for the fifth and last scene, where our robbers are now sitting inside a jail cell, the final image I decided to go with is this one right here. As you can see, it turned out really well. Nothing much to critique here, it just fits the story exactly the way it should. Now, to make our documentary feel a lot more in-depth and a lot more real, we don't just want one image per scene, we actually want to create multiple angles of each scene. The way to do this is simple. Just go back to ChatGPT and ask it to generate two more camera angles for the same scene. Instead of giving you full story prompts, it will give you small directions focused only on the angles, which is exactly what we want. So, for example, I took one of the new angle prompts that ChatGPT gave me for my first scene and then brought it back into OpenArt. But this time, instead of using the same model as before, I selected the Flux Dev model. What makes this one special is that it lets us upload our original scene image as a reference. That way, the AI will use that saved image as the baseline and create new images from different angles while still keeping the same exact style. All I had to do was open the subject reference option, upload my first image, paste in the new angle prompt and click create. And as you can see, it gave me a really detailed shot, like a zoomed in view of my character's arm with all the same details on the board where they're scheming the robbery. The same thing worked for the next picture where the characters were seated at the table. The AI recreated the exact same room and the same figures, but from a completely different angle, which instantly makes it feel more like a real scene from a film. So what I'm doing now is creating a couple of variations for each of my scenes. That way, when we put everything together, we're not stuck with one static shot per scene. We can actually build out a much fuller story with multiple angles covering the same moment, just like in a real documentary. I'll keep building these out and then come back to you once I have them all ready. And as you can see in front of you right now, I've gone ahead and created a couple of different angles for each of my scenes. Now it's time to actually turn them all into videos. To do that, you just head over to the left-hand side of OpenArt and click on the video section. Once that opens up, you'll see a new interface that looks pretty similar to the image section. From here, you want to go into the image-based video option since this allows us to take one of our images and use it as the starting point for the animation. Inside this section, you'll see multiple models you can choose from. The one I've found works best for this documentary style is Kling 2.1. It reacts really well to prompts, handles detailed instructions, and has a great cinematic look. Another option worth mentioning is Google VO3. This one is a little pricier, but it produces extremely realistic results. So if you really want to go all out with your project, VO3 is the way to go. But for today, I'm going to stick with Kling 2.1. Now in the drag and drop area at the top, I'm going to drop in my first image, in this case, the angle where our characters are sitting at the table. For the duration, I'll set it to five seconds. For quality mode, I'm going to select master. And for the prompt, I want to keep things subtle. Since we don't need crazy movement, I'll just tell the AI to add natural natural character movements, like small gestures or the characters slightly shifting while the camera slowly moves to the left. Then I just hit create. And once the render is done, the results look perfect. The characters have subtle movements. It feels like they're actually talking. Their hands lift slightly and the camera moves smoothly without adding any strange glitches or extra people in the frame. Everything stays exactly like it was in the original photo. And the end result is a video that feels alive while still staying clean and realistic. To really show you the kind of cinematic effects you can get with this, let me take one of my favorite shots so far, the front facing shot of our characters sitting inside the car. Just like before, I drop in the image, keep the same part of the prompt that tells the AI to add subtle character movements, but this time, I change the camera instructions. Instead of a slow pan to the left, I tell the AI to move the camera as if it's flowing through the car, almost gliding past the characters and revealing them one by one. This creates a cinematic effect, like the camera is floating through the car while the lights outside are flashing by, making it feel like a real scene out of a movie. So now I'll let this video generate and then we'll take a look at how it turned out. And looking at our completed shot, it honestly looks amazing. You really get the feeling of the camera flowing slowly through the car, just like I mentioned earlier, with the lights flashing by outside while they're driving. Everything stays completely intact too. The chauffeur is even shown slowly steering the car, which adds such a subtle but realistic detail. Overall, it came out looking really, really good. Now I'm gonna finish generating all of the other scenes I created. And once those are done, the 
that means the full video is basically ready. But there's one last thing that really adds to the authenticity and that true documentary style feel. And that's the script and the background voiceover. The way to do this, pretty simple. Since ChatGPT has memory of everything we've already worked on in the chat, you can just ask it to generate a narration script for the video. If you want, you can always write your own script instead. Just follow along with the scenes, explain what's happening, and add a little bit of background detail to make it feel more immersive. But to show you the full AI workflow, I asked ChatGPT to create the script for me and as you can see, it came out with something that looks really solid. So now I'm going to copy that entire script and bring it over into a tool called Eleven Labs, which is one of the best platforms for generating AI voiceovers. Inside Eleven Labs, you just click on the instant speech section and then paste in your script. I clean mine up a little bit first by removing the scene labels and deleting any quotation marks around the lines since we don't need those in the narration. Once that's done, you want to make sure to select the voice you want. If you go into the settings, you'll see they have a wide range of different options you can test out. Honestly, they all sound pretty good, but for my project, I went with the grandpa voice since it really fits the eerie, moody aesthetic of the documentary we're building. So I just select that one and then click generate. Once the voiceover is finished generating, you'll get a little preview to listen back to the whole thing. And if you head over from the settings tab into the history tab, you can see all of your generated voiceovers saved there. From that section, you can simply click download and grab the file in MP3 format. With that done, the final step is assembly all of our assets. For this, I'm going to use CapCut as my video editor, but honestly, you can use whatever editor you're most comfortable with. All I need to do is drag and drop everything in, all of the videos, the multiple angles we created, and then arrange them in the order I envisioned. Every scene goes where it fits, and the angles stack nicely to give the documentary that real documentary style pacing. Then, at the bottom, I just drop in the voiceover track, line it up with the visuals, and finally add some eerie background music to tie it all together. And with that, the video is complete. It all began in a dimly lit room. Four men huddled around a whiteboard, tracing arrows and floor plans, convinced they could pull it off. From the outside, they looked calm, but every detail was a step deeper into the point of no return. With the plan set, they slipped into the car, duffel bags on their laps, masks ready, and silence hanging heavy in the air. The city lights blurred past their windows, each mile pushing them closer to the crime that would define them. The bank erupted in chaos, guns drawn, orders shouted, and terrified hostages forced to the ground. Looking at the final result, it came out amazing. The shots are consistent from start to finish, the camera angles and movements feel really natural, and the voiceover itself sounds incredibly real, way more authentic than you'd expect from AI. And the best part is that it's all done inside OpenArt, fast, consistent, and incredibly easy. So if you want to start making your own documentary style videos, just like this one, go sign up to OpenArt using my link in the description. 